In this mini-clip, we'll be discussing the applications involving exponential models. While we answer this question together, you'll be solving the similar problem on your own using the same technique. Our question reads, the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,600 years. If a sample initially has 75 grams of carbon-14, how long will it take until only 15 grams remain? Before we begin answering this problem, let's just highlight the key points that are given to us. We're first told that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,600 years. This means that after 5,600 years, the mass of carbon-14 will be cut in half, or will be half its size it originally was. We're next told that a sample initially has 75 grams of carbon. So I'm going to highlight 70 grams. And lastly, we want only 15 grams of this carbon-14 to remain. I'm going to highlight this 15 grams, since this will be our final mass of carbon-14. The equation we're going to use to help us solve this problem is the following. A equal to A subscript 0, B to the exponent T divided by C. We're just going to go through what each of these variables represents. A is the final condition. A subscript 0 is the initial condition. B represents how the sample is increasing or decreasing in size. C is the length of time for the sample to increase or decrease B times. And T is the time elapsed. So all we're going to do now is that we're going to take our values that were given to us into in the question, and we're going to substitute them into our formula here. So I'm not just going to rewrite this down here, but I'm going to start off with this side. So we have A subscript 0. b to the exponent t divided by c is equal to a. Now, a subscript 0 was our initial condition, which we were told here is 75 grams. So I'm going to substitute 75 grams in for a subscript 0. b represents how the sample is increasing or decreasing in size. Well, we're told here that we're dealing with half-life. So this means that carbon-14 will be decreasing. It will actually be half its size after 5,600 years. So we can substitute one-half in for a variable b. t is our time elapsed, which is actually what we're solving for, how long it will take until only 15 grams remain. So I'm going to leave this as t. This is our unknown. C is our length of time for the sample to increase or decrease B times. So in other words, how long does it take before carbon-14 is half its size? And we're told here it's 5,600 years. So our C will be written as 5,600. Lastly, we want our final condition, which was 15 grams. I would now like you to try doing this step with the question you are given. Here's the answer you should have got. Now coming back to our question, we want to isolate for our t variable, which means that we want to get rid of all these numbers on this side of the equation. We only want t. So we'll notice the operation between 75 and this power here is multiplication. So to get rid of the 75, we need to do the opposite operation, which is division, and we need to divide by the 75. However, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we need to also do it to the other side of the equation. So we're going to divide 15 by 75 as well. 75 divided by 75 is 1, so we're going to be left with 1 half to the exponent t divided by 5,600. We have that this is equal to 15 divided by 75, if you put this in your calculator, is 0 
I'd like you to now try doing this step with the question you are given. Here's the answer you should have got. Now we've run into a little bit of a problem. Our variable is an exponent, so we can't really isolate it from this step. So what we want to do now is take the ln of both sides, and I'll explain in a minute why it is we're doing this. So we're going to have ln of 1 half all to the exponent t divided by 5600 is equal to, and now we're also going to take the ln of this side, the ln of, and I'm going to put in brackets, our 0 0.2. Now thinking back to our properties of natural logarithmic functions, we can rewrite this without the exponent. And the way we do that is by simply taking this exponent and rewriting it in front of the ln. This will give us the exact same numerical value, which is why we can do this. So we can rewrite this with t divided by 5600 out in front of the ln. I'm going to have ln of 1 half. And now I'm no longer going to write the exponent because I wrote it out here is equal to, and this side I will leave the same, ln of 0 0.2. Now looking at this step, it's very easy to now solve for t, since it is no longer an exponent. So because of our properties of the natural logarithmic function, this is why we took the ln of both sides in this previous step. So we can get it in the form that will be easy to solve for our variable t. I would now like you to try doing this step in the question you are given. Here's the answer you should have got. Now coming back to this question, we want to remember that we want to isolate for t. This means we need to now get rid of the 5600 and ln of 1 half. Now we can do this in one step, or we can do it step by step, either first eliminating 5600 and then ln of 1 half, or doing it in the opposite order. I'm going to first get rid of this 5600. Since the operation here is division, we want to multiply this side by 5600. But remember, whatever we do to one side, we need to do to the other side. So I'm also going to multiply this by 5600 as well. Now I'm just going to continue this question up here. 5600 divided by 5600 is simply 1, so we're left with t times ln of 1 half is equal to, now since the operation here is multiplication, I can rewrite this with 5600 out in front, since the order and multiplication doesn't matter. So I'm just going to rewrite this with 5600 out in front, times ln of 0 0.2. Now we need to get rid of the ln of 1 half. The operation here is multiplication. So in order to get rid of this, we need to divide, since division is the opposite operation of multiplication, by ln of 1 half. Again, we need to also do this to the other side of the equation. These will divide out to 1, so we will be left with t is equal to 5600 times ln of 0 0.2 all divided by ln of 1 half. I would now like you to isolate for t with the question you are given. Here's the answer you should have got. 
So now all we have to do is we need to put this in our calculator. 5600 times ln 0 0.2, all divided by ln of 1 half. I'm just going to round this to the nearest year. So you should have that t is equal to 13,003, and our units will be years. Since we were told here that the half-life of carbon-14 is 5,600 years, our time will also be in years. So I'm just going to write here, years. Now lastly, we just need our concluding statement. Therefore, it will take 13,003 years for 15 grams of carbon-14 to remain. I would now like you to finish off the question you were given. Therefore, it will take 2,358 years for 30 grams of carbon-14 to remain.